Hello everyone, good morning and welcome to another edition of Friday Fragments. I'm Gail of Ticket to Anywhere and this vlog meme is hosted by James over at Bookshop Club. And in this meme we take our current read or one of our favorite books and we read a short little fragment segment portion of it. Um, this week, I am not really enjoying my current read, and so I am going to read a book that I've been wanting to read that's been sitting on Mount TBR for a while. It is The Spirit Thief by Rachel Aaron. Um, I picked this book up at BEA, and I was like drawn to it by its cover. I saw it from like across the aisle, and I kind of like pushed people out of the way, I think, in order to go get it. Okay, I didn't really push people out of the way, but I did stop and run over and grab it because it just sounded really good after I picked up the cover. and. It was just a pretty blue cover. I don't know what it was about it, but I enjoyed it. So, I am going to read to you a little bit from chapter one, and I hope you like it. In the prison under the castle Alizés, in the dark, moldy cells where the greatest criminals in Milanor spent the remainder of their lives counting rocks to stave off madness, Eli Monpress was trying to wake up a door. It was a heavy oak door with an iron frame created centuries ago by an overzealous carpenter to have, perhaps, more corners than it should. The edges were carefully fit to lie flush against the stained stone walls, and the heavy boards were nailed together so tightly that not even the flickering torchlight could wedge between them. In all, the effect was so overdone, the construction so inhumanly strong, that the whole black affair had transcended simple confinement to become a monument to the absolute hopelessness of the prisoner situation. Eli decided to focus on the wood. The iron would have taken forever. He ran his hands over it, long fingers gently tapping in a way living trees found desperately annoying, but dead trees, oh, dead wood, find soothing, like a scratch behind the ears. At last the boards gave with a little shudder and said in a dusty, splintery voice, what do you want? My dear friend, Eli said, never letting up his tapping. The real question here is, what do you want? Pardon? The door rattled, thoroughly confused. It wasn't used to having questions asked of it. Well, doesn't it strike you as unfair? Eli said. From your grain, anyone could see you were once a great tree. Yet here you are, locked up through no fault of your own, shut off from the sun by cruel stones, with no concern at all for your comfort or continued health. The door rattled again, knocking the dust from its hinges. Something about the man's voice was off. It was too clear for our normal humans, and the certainty in his words stirred up strange memories that made the door decidedly uncomfortable. Wait, it grumbled suspiciously. You're not a wizard, are you? Me? Eli clutched his chest. I, one of those confidence tricksters, manipulators of spirits? Why, the very thought offends me. I am but a wanderer, moving from place to place, listening to the spirit's sorrows, and doing what little I can to make them more comfortable. He resumed the pleasant tapping, and the door relaxed against his fingers. Well, it leaned forward a fraction, lowered its creak conspiratorially. If that's the case, then I don't mind telling you the nails do poke a bit. It rattled, and the nails stood out for a second before returning to their position flush against the wood. The door sighed. I don't mind the dark so much, or the damp. It's just that people are always slamming me, and that just drives the sharp edges deeper. It hurts something awful, but no one seems to care. Let me have a look, Eli said, his voice soft with concern. He made a great show of pouring over the door and running his fingers along the joints. The door waited impatiently, creaking every time Eli's hands brushed over a spot where the nails rubbed. Finally, he said, had finished his inspection. Eli leaned back and tucked his fist under his chin, obviously deep in thought. When he didn't say anything for a few minutes, the door began to grow impatient, which is a very uncomfortable feeling for a door. Well, it croaked. I found the answer, Eli said, crouching down on the doorstep. Those nails which give you so much trouble are there to pin you in to the iron frame. However, Eli held up one finger in a stage gesture, they don't stay of their own accord. They're not glued in. There's no hook. In fact, they seem to be held in place only by the pressure of the wood around them. So, he arched an eyebrow, the reason they stay in at all, the only reason, is because you're holding them. Of course, the door rumbled. How else could I stay upright? 
who said you had to stay upright, Eli said, throwing out his arms in a grand gesture. You're your own spirit, aren't you? If those nails hurt you, why, well, there's no law that you have to put up with it. If you stay in this situation, you're making yourself a victim. But, the door shuddered uncertainty, the first step to admitting you have the first step is admitting you have a problem. Eli gave the wood a reassuring pat. And that's enough for now. However, his voice dropped to a whisper, if you're ever going to live your life, really live it, then you need to let go of the roles others have forced on you. You need to let go of those nails. But I don't know. The door shifted back and forth. Indecision is the bane of all hard words. Eli shook his head. Come on. It doesn't have to be forever. Just give it a try. The door clanked softly against its frame, gathering its resolve as Eli made encouraging gestures. Then, with a loud bang, the nails popped like corks, and the boards clattered to the ground with a long, relieved sigh. Eli stepped over the planks and threw the now-empty door iron door frame. The narrow hall outside was dark and empty. Eli looked one way, then the other, and shook his head. First rule of dungeons, he said, with a wry grin. Don't pin all your hopes on a gullible door. With that, he stepped over the sprawled boards, now mumbling happily in a peaceful, kneel-free slumber, and jogged off down the hall toward the rendezvous point. So that's my little snippet of The Spirit Thief by Rachel Aaron. I'm very curious to see why, you know, this person is breaking into one of the most horrible dungeons in this world, and hope you are too. I believe this book is out now, so go look for it in stores. And that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed the fragment. I probably already said that, but as you can see, still drinking my coffee. So, I'll see you next week with another edition of Friday Fragments.